can see the title conics and parametric functions check it out so you've got this cone and these little cross sections taken out of it top one's a circle second one's an ellipse third one's a parabola fourth one's a hyperbola now it's a little bit of a question mark we'll talk about that this is only half of a hyperbola um, but anyways let's not get too uh, far gone in the cover page here we go this is not is not a section taught to you from the book they are assuming you are very good at this skill completing the square so we're going to take an extra day so for example we will get to 1011 which is the book's information on the next lesson but today let's call it 10 1 1 half that's what I'm going to call it it is not from your book and your homework is even right here literally in your packet so with that being said you must be good at this and you better trust me when I say that because the stuff that we're going to pile on is all asking you to complete the square so here it comes quadratic equation any equation that can be written in the form diddle diddle duh. So hopefully you see this and you're like, oh, that's a trinomial. How do you complete the square? Well, you're going to change the form of a quadratic equation into this form so that then you can go bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. Now, I know that's a very generic explanation. Let's just put it into practice. So here we go. We've got this problem right here. We're just going to go bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. So we get x is plus or minus 7. Now we could have done this particular problem a little different by subtracting 49, subtracting 49. x squared minus 49 is 0. That's a difference of two squares. So x plus 7, x minus 7. So we'd get from here negative 7. From here we'd get 7. So you can see that this little technique is easier and it works. So let's apply it to number two. So we've got this looking thing right here. So we go bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. So we get x minus two equals plus or minus the square root of five. Now if this can be simplified, you need to simplify it, but obviously it can't be. So x is two plus or minus the square root of five. Same thing here. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. X plus 4 equals, watch this, plus or minus 4. Because that's what the square root of 16 is. Well, if I subtract 4 from both sides, I have two situations. X equals positive 4 minus 4, which is 0. But then I have negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8. So there's my two answers for x in that scenario. Now we got to be on our guard for this situation. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. So 3x minus 1 equals plus or minus. Now remember, imaginary numbers, technically, I take an i out and I'm left with i square root of 36, which is just 6i. I'm going to add 1, add 1. So I'd get 3x equals 1 plus or minus 6i. Divide by 3, divide this all by 3, and I would get 1 plus or minus 6i all over 3. I guess we could have just left it right there, but there it is. Now, the book might leave this like 1 third plus or minus 2i. In other words, 1 third and then 2i. I don't know if they do that or not, but both of these are perfectly fine. Okay, now I'm warming you up. We have yet to complete the square. I am just warming you up. So, factor this. Like, oh, okay, I think I know what this factors into. So I'm going to go like this, like this. X and X, two factors of four that add up to four. They're two. Now, the reason I picked this one is because this is called a perfect square trinomial. I've nicknamed it Psst. Fancy, huh? Because it's trying to get your attention. Because how could I write this? 
I could write it as x plus 2 squared. That's going to bring us to this problem. We already know what this is. This is a pst. Now I know a lot of students might have thought, well I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides and then I'm going to put everything in the quadratic formula and that will definitely work. But that is not the lesson today. The lesson is completing the square. So what is that? Well, we just factored it into this. So that's x plus 2 squared equals 12. Now that we've realized that this turns into this, now we can use the bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing, which is a lot easier than factoring. That was the point up here. So I get x plus 2 equals, and remember this breaks down into 4 and 3, plus or minus 2 squared of 3. So if I subtract 2, subtract 2, x is negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared of 3, and there it is. Now I'm going to say this. Take a good look at this. That is a perfect square trinomial which factors into this, which allows us to go bada boom, bada bing. Now notice that's a 1. That must be, must be a 1. Now, you're going to hear me say that a few times. So here we go. So, this says solve by completing the square. Now before I confuse you, I wrote this down. You can solve these using the quadratic formula, but graphing conics which remember 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 look at that cover page that is what this is all about is going to require or needs the skill of completing the square so here it is solve by completing the square you can see step one step two step three step four step five i'm not writing these down every single time but you can see i've got four more examples here so let's go Step one, add negative two to both sides and build two spaces on each side. Check, sure, check to make sure the coefficient of x squared is a one. I think this is like one step. So I'm gonna subtract two from both sides and I'm gonna look at that to make sure it's a one. But it says leave two spaces on each side. So this is x squared minus eight x plus space equals negative 2 plus space. Take half of the middle coefficient. Now what I'm talking about there is this. Some of you are like the middle of what? Well imagine there's something here. Now we have one, two, three things. We've got a trinomial. That's the middle coefficient. So we got to take half of that is negative 8 and then square it. So what's half of negative 8? negative 4 but then it says square it we get 16 so we put that right here but we got to put it right there because if I add 16 on the left side I got to keep it on the right I got to add it to the right side to keep perfect balance now if we've done it right this is a perfect square trinomial and you're gonna go aha I know what to do with that I'm gonna factor it x x what are the two factors of 16 up to negative 8? Negative 4, negative 4. Now, if you remember the whole bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing, we want it as a square of the binomial. We don't want to leave it like that. We want it x minus 4 squared equals 14. Now, here we go. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. So we get x minus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 14 can't break down. So now I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So my final answer would be 4 plus or minus the square root of 14. Now I have to say this again. You could have said a is 1, b is negative 8, c is 2, shoved it in here, and you'll get the same answer. Don't take the bait. We need to be practicing completing the square, and you're just going to have to trust me on that. So here we go, example six, a little different twist. So the first thing I want to do is check to make sure, well, this whole adding negative two to both sides, let's go ahead and get rid of that constant. That's what it's really saying to you, 5x squared 
minus 10x. Now, I did say build two spaces on each side, so let's go ahead and follow that. And now let's look at this. Check to make sure the coefficients of x squared is a 1. That is not a 1. So it has to be a 1. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide this whole side by 5, but we have to divide this side by 5. I'm going to use this space up here. So I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus space equals negative 7 fifths plus space. Can't emphasize this enough. That has to be a 1. Now we can lock in. Take half of the middle coefficient. This time it's a negative 2. What's half a negative 2? Negative 1. Square it, 1. But if I put a 1 there, i got to put a 1 here. Now I'm going to make this 5 fifths because that's adding 1 and I can see I need common denominators. This is a perfect square trinomial which is going to turn into x minus 1 squared equals negative 2 fifths. Now we're ready for bada boom bada bing do the right thing. We got a square root of a negative. I know I'm bouncing all over the place but we get x minus 1 equals, I'm going to take the i out. Well, let's go ahead and work on this down here. I get i square root of two fifths. I got to get that square root of five out of there. So I'm trying to do all my work down here. I'm going to transfer it up here. Plus or minus i square root of 10 because two times five is 10 and then the roots fly off. Now if I add one to both sides, I finally get my answer one plus or minus i square root of 10 all over five. All right, there's example six. Example seven little bonus. We got a 1 there. That's good. But there's something a little different that I threw in this example problem. You're going to see it here in two seconds. k squared plus 5k plus space equals 10 plus space. For the first time we have an odd number. Odd numbers are a total pain. But follow the rules. Take half of that. Don't introduce decimals. That would be 5 halves. Now you square it. So we get 25 fourths, 25 fourths. Now believe it or not, this is a perfect square trinomial. You guys just aren't used to seeing them this weird. I'm going to give you a hint. These, after you've done 10,000 of them, you will realize, y'all, they're all pluses, and that's k squared, so that's k plus. This number right here will always be the number you put in your squared binomial. That's the number after you've taken half. Prove it. Well, remember this problem right here? That was negative 2. If we took half, it was negative 1. That's what went in here. So equals, now remember we need common denominators, 40 fourths. So that would be 65 fourths. Here we go. Bada boom. Bada bing. Do the right thing. Good news square root of 4 is 2. So we get plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2. And so we get k plus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2. Subtract 5 halves, subtract 5 halves, so we get negative 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2, which could be written negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2. So we got common denominators. But either way, those last few things I circled are fine. Okay, let's keep it going. Now we got number 8 that needs a little rearranging. So I'm going to add 10 and I'm going to go 3v squared minus 12v equals 10. Like, well, don't get started until that's a 1. So we've got to divide that all by 3. You just have to. v squared minus 4v plus space equals 10 thirds plus space. Half a negative 4 is negative 2. You've got to square that. That's a 4, but then I've got to add 4 over here. Remember our trick? If we're going to factor that, this is our little clue. That's going to be v minus 2 equals... Now we need common denominators here, so 4 is 12 thirds, so I get 22 thirds. 
and here it comes. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. But I'm going to get that square root of 3 out of there at the same thing, at the same time. V minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 66 over 3. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 66 over 3. There's my answer for that problem. Last one. Bring that 3 over. And maybe you don't need this last one, but I'm going to throw it at you anyways. y squared minus 1y, that's kind of why I put this one in there, plus space equals 3 plus space. Well, half of negative 1 is negative 1 half. Square it. I get 1 fourth, and I get 1 fourth. If what we've been teaching is true, that factors into y minus this number squared equals, now I know this is 12 fourths, so 12 fourths and 1 fourth is 13 fourths, so bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing, which is the square root of 13 over 2, so I get y minus 1 half equals square root of 13, don't forget the plus or minus, almost did, over 2. Add a half to both sides, so I get y is 1 half plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2, which can be written as this. But either one of these is totally fine. All right, as you can see, your homework is on the next page, not from your book. So good luck, get after it. Oh, the last thing I didn't say is, you could FOIL this out to make sure. So y minus 1 half, y minus 1 half, we got to make sure that this equals this. And if you look, if we go outside and inside, that's negative 1 half y and another negative 1 half y gives us a negative 1 y. And everything else checks out. It's kind of a, kind of a cool thing. There you go.